CBMX Games asks, uh, how do you do animations with sprite sheets if you use sprite sheets? Uh, I use sprite sheets. I can show you how my my animation looks. So for the cat, I think this is the normal running animation. Now I zoomed it up in the. This, <laughs> It doesn't do near his neighbor, the Windows Photo Viewer, but it's like this, four, 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 four frames. It's, the, it's this animation here. Uh, I make it in a sprite. I can show how it looks in a sprite. Here, no, that's not how it looks in a sprite. In a sprite, it looks, that's the, that's the exported data. In a sprite, it looks like this have four frames and I can play it and it plays like that. The way I export it is I go to the export menu in Asprite and choose export sprite sheet and then I choose to output it as a PNG and I think these are the default settings but essentially it puts all the frames like this one after another. And in the game, it if you go to game.odin you have what's it called? Uh, the player has a sort of for example, in the normal state, we have the normal state up here, which is a sort of the standard state where you're just walking around like this. It's this one. Then it has an animation, an uh, update animation like this, and this animation will be in this state set to the uh, that four frame walking animation. And this update animation doesn't do much fancy stuff. It uh, there's this anim idea of an animation instance that has, uh, it knows which frame it is on, it knows how, how long it's been on that frame, and then inside the animated sprite, which is also part of it, it knows how many frames there are and how long each frame is. That's the four things you need. You need to know how long is each frame supposed to be, how many are there, and then you need to know which frame am I currently on, and then you need to know what is the, what is the, uh, for how long have I been on the current frame. And then up to the animation just uses that and it's like, okay, it it takes the, <laughs> why, is the why is this dt equals dt here, whatever. Um, I think it's a refactor, old refactor thing. So this one takes the frame timer on the animation instance, which is sort of a pointer here. It takes that one and subtracts the delta, the current frame delta time. And then if that number goes equals zero or less, that means we are we should go to the next frame. So then it just says current frame plus equals one. And if current frame is more or equal to num the number of frames in animation, then it will say current frame equals zero. I also have some extra stuff here for doing one shot animations that you know stop at the last frame, but you can ignore that. And another extra thing I do down here is that after I change the frame, I set the frame timer to the frame timer plus the frame length plus the frame timer because this one might be less than zero. So this way uh, you don't lose time. So if this one is uh, half a second, if the frame length is half a second and you, and the frame timer actually went minus 0 0.1, then this, this will actually be 0 0.4 now. So you kind of catch up. You don't lose like a bit of time if you're low frame rate. It's not that important if you have a high frame rate and stuff actually. It's just something I did at some point. And when you have this stuff, then you can just calculate the rectangle for how to draw your uh, sprite, uh, because then you can go to like draw world. Um, where's the cat thingy here? Uh, I need to calculate the I have this function to calculate the rectangles so from the sprite. So what it essentially does is that the source rectangle is where in the sprite sheet should we take our, uh, uh, where in the sprite sheet should we look? So kind of where, where on this, uh, should we look at this square, this square, this square, or this square, you know? So this kind of does that. It takes the, it fetches the texture and then it says, okay, uh, the source rectangle, should start at uh, x equals uh, the number of frames times the width of the textures divided by the number of frames. So the, the current frame times the width of the texture divided by the number of frames, which will be like the current frame is either 0, 1, 2, or 3, and then the full width of texture is this width here, and then the number of frames is 4, so we get, if this is, I think this is 16 pixels each frame, so it would be 0, 16, uh, 
3248. So it and that so that would be the x value here. And then the y value is always zero because the rectangle always starts up here. And then the width is just uh, the width of the source rectangle from where to pick is just the width of the texture divided by the number of uh, animation frames. And the height is just the height of the texture because we always so we have the width is always this and the height is always this stuff. That's the source rectangle. And the destination rectangle is just where in the world to put it, which is the current position of the entity that is using this animation. And then you also have the width and the height and the stuff, uh, which is just the uh, uh, yeah, it's just the height of these squares. And when you have your rectangles, when you have your rectangle. Currently, I put it on a list to draw, but later down here is actually where it's drawn. So then it just does in Rayleigh Draw Texture Pro. It knows which texture, and the texture rect here is the source rectangle we calculated. So it's one, this one, this one, this one, or this one. And then it draws into a destination rectangle somewhere in the world. And then uh, it also, I also think I set the origin to be the origin is like where is zero? Is it in the middle or up in the corner or down here? You can move that around as you wish, depending on your needs. Also rotate it if you want and stuff, but that's essentially it. So it's it's just the animation instance is essentially four variables that are with the timer and the current frame and stuff, and then it makes a rectangle and then it draws textures. Uh, if you want to optimize this, you can always put all all your textures into an atlas. I was thinking of doing that, but I haven't done that. Uh, it would be nice to have my whole game in a giant like. Uh, not not too giant, but I could probably fit my game in one texture in the end, um, or maybe two. We'll see how many how many because the the resolution is quite low.